Uh, we are starting uh, with introducing Paul Hoover. Paul Hoover, <laughs> welcome, please. Uh, Paul Hoover has published 15 books of poetry, including Desolation Souvenir. His translations include Black Dog, Black Knight, an anthology of contemporary Vietnamese poetry by Milkweed Editions in 2008, Beyond the Court Gates, selected poems of Guyen Tri by Counterpath Press in 2010, and the complete poems of San Juan de la Cruz with Maria Baranda, forthcoming from Milkweed Editions in 2017. All of his translations, with the exception of the unpublished Yego Nocturna Corriendo and On Prado Adeluz Absoluta by Mexican poet Maria Baranda, for which he won a pen translation grant, have been done in collaboration. Even though his poetry was not widely celebrated in his lifetime, and now is switching to Frederick Holderin, the poet whose work Paul is going to read from his translations. Even though his poetry was not widely celebrated in his lifetime, and he suffered from mental illness for half of his life, Frederick Holderlin, 1770 to 1843 is his lifespan, is considered one of the great, great poets of world literature. Because of his complex syntax and themes, the proto-modernist fragmentation of his late works and the influence of his thought, Holderin now outstrips Goethe and Schiller as the valued poet of his period. A Hellenist who addressed the gods and was the first to grieve their departure, he is a major figure of Romanticism and contributed well in advance of Nietzsche and Heidegger to the development of existentialism. Paul will read from his fragments of hymns written during his period of mental collapse, which is 1804 to 1807. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, having said that, I don't have to introduce the poet. <laughs> great. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to uh, first uh, read something about translation, if that's OK. Um, I'm, I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, this is from. Uh, Cole Swenson, Noise That Stays Noise. A translation is a ghost. It goes out into another world in all its perfect viability. It causes belief, while on the other hand it sets up an echo, very faint in the original, so that the original is now haunted by a separate voice that continues to separate. A ghost is always offset, slightly incongruent, and fraying at the edge. A translation, unlike an original, can never stop. It bleeds on out. It causes change in itself. And it's a very smart. Um, so I'm going to read uh, not entirely from the fragments of hymns, but I'll, I'll start with a, a later ode called Tears, or Threnen. Heavenly love, so tender, if I should forget you, you who are marked by fate, you who are fiery, full of ash and waste, and even before that you were lonely and desolate, dear islands, eyes of the world in wonder, since only you matter now, you banks on which, for the sake of love and to heaven alone, the godless say their prayers. For almost too gratefully in the days of beauty, furious heroes and the holy served there, and there were many trees, and the city stood there at one time, visible like a man lost in thought. Now the heroes are dead, the islands of love defaced, almost disfigured. So forever love is outwitted and utterly absurd. Yet soft tears don't completely extinguish the light of vision for me. Still, to help me die nobly, you frauds and thieves, let one memory live on in me. Not, well, he, he was a, uh, hmm. uh, he contributed to uh, philosophy because uh, Fichte had been leading people on to believe, he was a romantic philosopher, that subjectivity was everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in, uh, he said, Hölderlin said, no, no, we know each other by what they see in us. 
what we can see in them that they know of us. So subjectivity and objectivity are blended in a kind of dialectic. And uh, Hoderlin's um, roommate from the g gymnasium was uh, named Hegel. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Hegel used to pass love notes for um, Hoderlin when Hoderlin had an affair. Mm -hmm. So there you go, there's the whole history of philosophy, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm talking too much, so I'll skip. Uh, this is from the Fragments of Hymns, uh, it's called Tinian. And the Fragments of Hymns have uh, elisions in them and blank spaces. Uh, it was 1840, 1807, and he was cracking up. And uh, so he was going to fill it in later, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it didn't happen. So Tinian, it's sweet to get lost in the holy wilderness, four dashes, and drink, O oh kind spirit, at the wolf tits of the waters mm -hmm. that wander through my native land to me. Wilder once, but now like orphans accustomed to the taste. In spring, when unfamiliar wings return to the warmth of the woods, resting in solitude, among the willow trees full of fragrance, where butterflies mingle with bees and your Alps, big divide. Divided from God, the divided world, and indeed they stand armed and wander as they wish timelessly. For the gods hazard us a falcon's glance, or like gladiators, the gods decree these outward signs to be birthmarks of whose child the West must be. Some flowers don't grow from the earth, but sprout in loose soil of their own will, counter light of our days. Nor should one pick them, for they stand golden, prepared for what they prepared only for what they are, leafless even as thoughts. Another fragment uh, called, And to Experience the Lives. Und mitzufühlen das Leben. And to experience the lives of demigods or patriarchs who sit in judgment, but they are not equal to everything around them, that is life, buzzing with heat and the shadow's echo, as if brought together at the burning point of fire. Wastelands of gold are well tended like the flint that ignites the life warm hearth, as night strikes sparks from the smooth stone of day, and around dusk a stringed instrument plays. Hunter's gunshots hiss toward the sea. That's, that's a nutty thing to imagine, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but the Egyptian, bare-breasted, continues singing in the woods by the fire about her bones aching from work, signaling the clear conscience of the planets, clouds, and seas. A stream rushes through Scotland, as on the lakes of Lombardy and beyond into a brook. Their lives as fresh as pearls, boys play near the shapes of their teachers or of corpses, or the soft cries of swallows as they circle the crowns of towers. No, in truth, the day constructs no human shapes. But first, an old thought, knowledge, Elysium, and lost love of contests, horses, skittish, and moist. <laughs> and now uh, I'm going to read uh, from the uh, Spätest uh, Gedichte, the latest or uh, uh, last poems, written when he was you know, all the way up over. <laughs> and he uh, signed his name, he didn't sign this, uh, Hoderlin, uh, when they published his book, unknown to him, they published a book of his poetry in 1826, and presented it to him, and he read it with interest, and he said, yes, I remember these poems, but who is this fellow Hoderlin? <laughs> so uh, the last poems are uh, characterized by e, uh, facile rhyme, they're kind of childlike. Fame. God is linked with the perfect sound, attended by a very famous ear. For a famous life is wonderful and clear. Man goes on horse or walks upon the ground. The joys of, of earth, happiness and ease, 
the vineyard and its keeper, garden and trees. They seem to me the heavenly light of clouds, granted by the Spirit to solitudes and crowds. When a man with goods is richly blessed, when fruit trees go, grow in his garden, and dressed in gold or his house and dwelling, what more in the world does he need to restore him? Thank you very much.